Hey, everybody. Welcome to today's Frequency Chat. I'm so excited to share with you, and I'm so excited that you're here. We're going to talk about frequency medicine and exactly what that is. We're also going to talk about libido and lack of libido and some other issues besides hormone balance that influence that. A little bit of my background, so most of you know that I was raised in traditional medicine, but became a naturopath and then got my master's in nutrition. And this, this technology, this is kind of my baby. It's building a bridge for me between traditional, natural, and Eastern medicine, also integrating quantum physics and everything I've learned along my pathway that truly works. And I knew that this was my destiny, but I didn't know what it looked like. I knew I was meant to create something that was a new path to wellness. But it turns out 20 years later, here I am with this technology. Okay, so what is Vibrogenics? Now, I was talking to uh, Dr. Jeffrey Tucker, really close friend of mine. He's an amazing chiropractor. He's actually the president of the American Chiropractic Association Rehab Division. And he's had a barbogenics in his practice for probably about four years, but his practice is so busy and he has so many patients on it that he rarely gets to use it. So now he's gotten one in his home. And I was talking to him the other day and he goes, you know, you're going to have to change your languaging a little. He said, you say frequency medicine. And he goes, I barely understand that. So how is the rest of the public going to understand that? So, and he also asked me another question, what I thought the ultimate biohack was. And I truly believe that vibrogenics is it. And I'll explain in the science why I believe that. So this is sound frequency medicine for your mind, body, and spirit. It's very, very holistic in nature. There are over a thousand frequency formulas for all kinds of conditions, mental, emotional, spiritual, all the things that need to come together for a balance and vitality and health. We have also included a scalar wave generator, which is getting to be a more important thing. It's one of the fastest ways to get your cell voltage up to help heal the body. And it actually <clears throat> creates zero point energy or tachyon energy that is really amazing for your cells. There's also brain optimization formulas in here, which is also very important. You know, the six inches right between your ears, it governs a lot of things. And of course, Eastern medicine, which my goal is to demystify Eastern medicine because it has been around so long. It literally showed up like the chakra system showed up in the Vedas between 1500 and 500 BC. It's just, it's been around having energy centers blocked and all the associated chronic negative conditions that go along with that has been documented for centuries. So it's really not woo-woo. It's actually something that works. One of them was in special education and she taught medical school. But one thing that always impressed me is if students had difficulty understanding the concept, she would always present it in a different way. So I'm going to try again to present it in a different way and a newer way so that maybe more people want to understand it. So traditional medicine, you know, that I was deeply embedded in when I was raised and then naturopathic medicine, they all share the same focus. So we all focus on the same thing, the systems in the body and the organs in the body. The difference is traditional medicine is more illness management, which is why I made that right turn and went into naturopathic medicine. So they are only given two tools, and that's drugs and surgery. Now, I have nothing against traditional medicine. There's some great things in there. If I'm in a car accident, the first place I'm going is to ER. And I think they're amazing at that. But I do think that, you know, despite the Hippocratic Oath, I think there is there are a lot of things that are done in traditional medicine that are actually harmful for the body. The side effects, the after effects can cause so many more problems. So naturopathic medicine, the same kind of focus, but it is all about supporting the body and the systems and the organs so they can start healing themselves. And that's what drew me to it in the first place. Also, they look at supplementation, but more natural supplementation as instead of drug supplementation to um, mitigate symptoms and support the body. Nutrition is also another factor. I got a master's in nutrition because there wasn't enough of that in naturopathic medicine, and there's almost none in traditional medicine. They don't look at that aspect at all. Um, lifestyle, environment, toxins, mold exposure, all of those things. These are things that naturopaths commonly take into account. And I think that holistic model where you're looking at everything in the life that is supporting health is really important. 
So Vibrogenics is what I created to be a bridge that would embrace what we need from the traditional medicine side, the naturopathic side, and the Eastern medicine side. So as far as traditional medicine, we all know that, you know, proper circulation is really important. Lymphatic drainage is extremely important. And traditional medicine is actually looking at that as being the underlying cause of all disease, because that's literally what's cleaning out your bloodstream and your body all the time. Exercise is important. Everybody's always encouraged to exercise. Bone density is definitely something that is embraced by the medical community as far as an application for vibrogenics. It will halt bone loss and reverse it. It helps to do some dietary things as well, because if you're over acid, your body tends to pull minerals from your bones to try and alkalinize your body. So that's another aspect there, but really good for bone density and for increasing the tone and tightness and mass of muscles, especially if you do resistance training while on the machine, you'll tighten tone and build muscle up to 50% faster. Naturopathic medicine looks at all those same things, embraces the, this kind of technology for all those same things. But we also look at the emotional state. So my daughter used to always say when she was little, healthy is happy and happy is healthy. And she was probably four or five. And I don't know where she got that and where she, I don't know, but she ran with it. She said it for about a year. <laughs> Maybe it was trying to remind me. <laughs> but there are frequencies in the machine for relieving the stress and relieving the depression, things that are really, really important because our emotional state profoundly affects our physical health. So we also look at toxins. There are frequencies in this machine to get rid of all kinds of toxins in your system. And it is probably the most profound thing I've ever seen for simulated lymphatic movement, which is your biggest detox pathway. Uh, we also embrace other technologies. So this technology has rife frequencies. It has ancient tones, ancient medicine, all kinds of things. Naturopaths look for alternative medical tools outside of drugs and surgery to really help support the body in becoming healthy and vital. Cell voltage is another thing we embrace because that's your basic building block of your physical body is that, that energy inside the cell. And when you are have healthy cells, it makes all the difference in the world uh, as far as the healing process and as far as anti-aging. The mind, the mind controls everything. If you listen to a lot of speakers, they say everything starts in the six inches right up here. And I think that balancing that brain with frequency is very, very important. So the Eastern medicine component is very near and dear to me. And I really hope to demystify it because a lot of people Think of Eastern medicine as being very, very woo-woo, but it is all about mind, body, spirit. And the more you study, the clearer it gets. So clearing trauma from the body, really, really important in Eastern medicine because they believe that that leads to all disorder, dysfunction, and disease. And that's usually due to trauma. So a trauma block can be mental, emotional, or physical. The chakras, now the chakras, that is also woo-woo to a lot of people. But the chakras are actually in the oldest texts, which are the Vedas from 1500 BC to 500 BC. And there's detailed uh, records on, on those energy centers, what they do and what the blockages of those energy set centers cause, what symptoms it causes in the body. Ancient tones have been around forever. There's even King Solomon's uh, healing frequency in there. There's a world healing frequency. There's Transformation of Miracles, which is 528, super heavily researched, used by NASA. Um, but the energy field is of utmost important in Eastern medicine. I would say they almost look at that first and see that effect on the physical body. Okay, we're going to talk about this guy again. So this is such a vital key to healing. So this is Otto Warburg. He won his Nobel Prize for his research in cell voltage. And actually, a lot of it was done revolving around cancer patients. And he found that they have a cell voltage of about negative 15 millivolts. So at negative five, your organs start shutting down. Negative 35, you're one of those people that gets all the colds and flus. Negative 50 millivolts, which is a little bit better, is what the average person is walking around. And that's because of exposure to toxins, um, things that aren't good for us in, in what we eat, environmental toxins, um, lack of nutrition, all of those kinds of things. 
But if he said, if you can get your cell voltage up negative 70 to negative 90 millivolts, the body becomes a spontaneous healing machine. And this is before and after just 10 minutes on sonic vibration. This is not a slide <clears throat> or a test that was done using scalar wave technology. So I will actually want to get another study done and compare it after scalar wave technology, because that is incredible for boosting your cell voltage as well. So you should get a much more profound effect. Mechanical vibration doesn't do anything but shake your cells. It doesn't do anything to increase the energy and they go right back into the position that they were in before. And this is really the key to anti-aging because you're constantly making new cells. You know, I've said this before, every 48 hours, you have new rods and cones in your eyes. Every seven years, every cell has been replaced. So you're either taking that sick cell and making more sick cells or you're making taking a healthy cell and making healthier cells. So it really governs aging. And it really governs the body's ability to resist anything it's exposed to. There is a theory that's out there that I've heard many, many times that if you really test a human being for everything, you'll find out that most people carry all kinds of viruses within their systems. They've been exposed to all kinds of things, but they don't manifest into a disease in that person. And that is because the Petri dish, the body is kept in such a high state of vibration and health that the cells can resist anything. All right, so sound. I've been extremely fond of sound for a very long time. I used to always say I never would have survived my childhood without music, without the piano, and without horses. And the piano is something that I taught myself to play when I was four. And by the time that I was nine, I was performing in church. And by the time I, I turned 15, I had my first piano lessons, but I started, I fell in love with Bach and Beethoven. And I used to close my eyes and literally like I became one with the music and I would open my eyes at the end of the song. I would just, by the time I learned it, I had it in my head and I could just play it without looking at music. And it was such a healing transformative experience for me. I knew there was something to it. It really got me through a lot when I was growing up. So I think my fondness for sound has come from way, way back, but sound travels really well through space, as we know, but it travels five times faster through water. So being hydrated and, you know, 70% is high hydration. A lot of people are more like 65, but 70% is great. Your sound frequencies from this technology are going to travel five times faster th through your body and affect every cell at the same time. So it's so much more effective than other kinds of electrical pulse or different kinds of therapies because of the water in your body. All right. So what are you? You are frequency and you are vibration. So people have a hard time wrapping their head around this. So most people and most traditional and naturopathic doctors, they look at the body, you know, the, the meat sack or the, you know, musculoskeletal system that's holding up all these systems and organs and helping us to move. But we are so much more than that. If you look at our basic building block, which is the atom, you have the protons and neutrons in that nucleus and the electrons spinning around it at the speed of light. So literally, literally, you are frequency. You're 99.99999% space. And if you think about that, it's going to blow your mind. That's a quantum physics thing, but it is very, very real. So if we are frequency, why aren't we using frequency to treat the body? So this is, to me, the ultimate form of a healing tool, actually, is using these vibrational frequencies all in sound format to heal the body. So that'll give you something to think about way into the night that you're just space and air and vibration. <laughs> All right, Eastern medicine. I want to talk a little bit more about this. Eastern medicine overlays perfectly with quantum physics, the more you study it. Now, quantum physics, this toroidal field of energy that's going around the body, that quantum physicists say goes around every living thing, even the earth. And then the spiral of energy, according to Eastern medicine, that comes down from source and goes into the earth and back, all of those things, the toroidal field and the energy field from source and from the earth 
are all going through your chakras. And the chakras are incredibly important to health, having them open and functioning. So trauma can cause a huge issue. And you think about this, it can be personal trauma to your physical being. It can be emotional trauma, which is outside your physical being is where it gets trapped and stored. It could be mental trauma, which is the next layer after that. Or it can be people and their stuff that's moving through your field. So if your field extends out way past your fingertips, think about all the people that come through your field. This is why monks become monks, <laughs> is to cut down on all that static and all that other energy that's coming through. So where I really see this being an issue a lot, actually, is with healers. <clears throat> so healers are constantly tra treating sick people, right? And if they are a natural healer, they have that healing energy. That's their gift from source to give to other people. They're doing what they're meant to do, but they're constantly bringing in and emitting energy. So that healing energy is going to the patient and the patient's dysfunction, disorder, disease is coming into their field. So it's really, really important after a day of work to really clear your energy field. And this is really phenomenal technology for that. If you use those frequencies for the chakra clearing, I use the ancient tones I use the scalar waves and I do some meditation and clear all that out. And I think it's really important for health. So ancient tones are some of my favorites that TVSW, please experiment with that. That is a great program because it has the, uh, not only the <clears throat> binaural beats, but the beat for the, or the tone for the bass brain. And then it has that scalar wave generator, which I think in time, more and more of those are going to be coming forward. Meditation, I talked about really, really important. You can actually enhance the flow of energy from source down through your body. All right. This is what y'all came for. <laughs> Lack of libido. So this is a really complex issue. So potential causes, second chakra blockage, uh, hormones, emotional stress, lack of intimacy, and trauma. I do want to make a note on the hormones. So I have had patients, men, that have had very low testosterone levels, and they still had a great sex drive. So it is not directly correlated with hormones in all people. Like I said, those pieces of the healing tapestry, you know, each person has different things that they need to, um, to fully function. And I think hormone balancing is very important. But like I said, as far as uh, libido goes, it's not always directly correlated. So this is the male frequency protocol. Second chakra clearing is really, really important. And we'll get to that in a minute. It is for men and women. Uh, there is a frequency in pro called sexual dysfunction men. In cell tunes, there's another one called impotence. I always try to do the TBSW rejuvenation. I think that is really important. It has 528 in it, and that's the frequency that actually repairs DNA. And then mood elevation. I think anytime you're dealing with anything in the body. I think this is one of my favorite frequencies. It's the combination of depression and fatigue frequencies all put into one button for convenience and it increases the serotonin. So it really helps the healing process, no matter what you're dealing with, whether it's emotional healing, um, mental or physical. Women tend to be a little more complex. No surprise there. <laughs> so especially when it comes to trauma, if there has been any sexual trauma, it is really important to clear the second, the third, and the fourth chakra. So fourth chakra is heart. Third chakra is your personal power. And second chakra has to do with all the other things from urinary tract to OBGYN problems to um, all kinds of problems. So the frequencies, um, you can run the second, third, and fourth in either pro actually, or in cell tunes. It's your choice. There is one called frigidity female, and you got to remember Rife was naming these. So I just stuck with his names. It just, <laughs> maybe, maybe I'd have chosen a different one. Um, cell tunes, I would run rejuvenation again with scalar waves on, uh, vibrogenic control, mood elevation, then hormonal balance.
So this is the second chakra. There is actually a specific tone in the system that opens each chakra. It's one of the fast tracks to opening your chakras. I know there's people that do chakra opening uh, clinics and, and seminars and, you know, spending hours focusing on and trying to clear the energy in a chakra, but you can actually take the cell exciter and you can actually put it on that chakra and it will open. So if it is not open, these are the physical problems that go along with a misaligned or trauma filled blocked chakra. So low back pain, that is one of the most common things that we deal with. There's so much of that in the world, a lot of sciatica fibroids. That's kind of a big issue. <clears throat> OBGYN problems, pelvic pain, libido, urinary tract problems. So getting that center open, the body can actually start healing itself better. Uh, the mental, emotional issues that go along with the center getting closed are blame, guilt, money, sex, power, control, creativity, and morality. Now, creativity, suppressed creativity is according to Eastern medicine, the number one cause of fibroids. So if you have, or you're up against a fibroid issue, definitely find a creative outlet for yourself. A lot of times I see it's, I find that it's people that are very, very creative uh, by nature that have stopped doing any of that to take care of all the things they need to take care of in life. Time to get back to that. Um, urinary tract problems, even with UTIs, which there are UTI frequencies, also running the second chakra is really important. And if you look in your programs, your um, uh, chakra balancing programs, you can click on any one of them and it will tell you all the common problems that go along with that area. But back to the trauma with women, it's not just second chakra. It needs to be third and fourth because your personal power is your third chakra and that gets overrun in cases of trauma. And then the heart chakra, it's very emotional. Same thing with some men, you know, men are, some men are built psychologically and emotionally very much like women. So you might want to look at clearing all those as well. So just to go around the wheel for all the new people of all the stuff this can do. So great for mood elevation, the frequencies for depression and fatigue are in here. And antidepressants are still the number one prescription in the United States. Uh, as far as pain relief, there's great pain relief uh, frequencies, lots of them for different kinds of pain, different areas in the body. It's a drug-free way, and that is to get rid of pain. And that is our number two prescription for the anti-aging. It is back to that cell voltage. When you're getting your cell voltage up and you're recreating new cells in your body, you want younger, healthier cells. And I have seen this technology turn back the clock 10 to 15 years in people, especially if you're in your 60s or 70s. It just, it seems almost miraculous. The brain balancing is very important um, for stress relief, for all kinds of sleep disorders, for opening that intuition and really developing your spiritual awareness and heightening that, raising your vibration, using the scalar uh, wave technology to do that as well. Weight loss, really good for that, especially if you combine it with uh, the mood elevation frequencies and stress relief. It has the frequencies in there for cavitation lipolysis that they use in non-invasive lipo. Like I said, the best thing I've seen for lymphatic uh, circulation and stimulation. Uh, animals, don't forget your don't forget your fur babies. They love this. It is extraordinarily effective on them, uh, more effective on them than a lot of people because they just instinctively know it works. Um, meditation, I always encourage that. I think we covered the chakras and the ancient tones pretty well. And then peak performance, I perhaps should put a little bit more weight on that. So as we age, we're slower to recover and getting your cell voltage up and running the frequencies for muscle pain and injury, any kind of inflammation, all of those things, if you do that after your exercise or when you're injured, it speeds recovery remarkably at any age. So if you sprain your ankle, you want to put the cell exciters down in your, in your sock, hold them there and turn on the frequencies for muscle pain and injury, for inflammation, for joint pain. And usually it takes four or five sessions of that and it's, it's all gone. So this is getting more and more into the strength and conditioning uh, collegiate level, and they're using it for neuromuscular entrainment. There's a program for that called Peak Performance. If you've looked at that at all in your machine, they are very 
short programs. So there's peak one, two, three, there's five of them. And they're actually pairing them with all the right frequencies that you'll find below. And they'll have their athlete do three squats, three lunges off one side, three lunges off the other, jump up, spin around and do it again, and then go do a set. And they find that helps with coordination uh, and neuromuscular balance and stimulation. So it gets athletes performing better. And then the recovery aspect is profound because athletes push themselves hard in training, in practice, and in games. So getting them recovered so they can play at their peak, they avoid a lot of injuries. It's also really good for all kinds of injuries, uh, hamstrings, hamstring sprains. You can sit on the plate first and then stand on it for your next session. And it is remarkable how fast you heal. So Using the cell exciters on different parts of the body is something they do too. You know, the, the pitchers, you know, they'll use them on their shoulder before a game, after a game, even practices. So really effective for that. All right, let's see here. Our four machines and our mobile unit, now called the accelerator. It's kind of exciting. I like that name. It took us forever to find out, figure out a name for it. We called it the traveling companion for a long time, but it's going to be the accelerator. Um, it's going through a few changes, um, but we're putting it also into uh, more heavily into the veterinary industry because it's something that can be taken kind of from room to room or a mobile vet going out to treat an animal. Still have our summer sale going on and. If you have any questions for next week, if you could send them in to info at Vibrodenix, then I can look them over and put them on the list. We didn't get a lot of questions this week, but I do have a few. All right. So first question here is, I'm planning to do a liver flush with Epsom salts and olive oil and grapefruit juice soon based on my doctor's recommendation. Are there any protocols that will, <clears throat> with Vibrodenix that would complement a flush? So first off, yuck, <laughs> Epsom salts taste terrible. I'm just going to give you a heads up. That is a pretty rough way to go. Um, so anything you do for liver support in the, in the machine, uh, if, if you have an enlarged liver, I would run that. Um, you may get some added inflammation from doing the flush. One thing I highly recommend with anybody that wants to regenerate their liver is milk thistle ex extract. So milk thistle is the only thing that we have ever found that actually regenerates cells in the liver. It will actually make new ones. And it does it at a pretty good rate if you get a good kind of milk thistle and take it consistently. I know a lot of people that over drink that counteract that by heavy use of milk thistle. <laughs> and I don't know, I guess it works for them. But I would, I would definitely do that. Um, grapefruit juice. So that's good. That'll help counteract. Other than that, um, have fun with that. <laughs> okay. I tend to have high homocysteine levels. I take supplements to lower it. Could vibrogenics also be used to support pro proper, I can't speak anymore, um, methylation. So uh, high homocysteine levels um, are indicative of the possibility of a few things, either issues going on with the heart or it can be vitamin deficiencies. So especially vitamin B12 and folate, but I always recommend that you get on a really good B complex. Um, the Twin Lab uh, stress B capsules with C, they are super hypoallergenic. They work really well for a lot of people and they're tested and they're their levels are all correct. You could take that and then take some extra B12 sublingually and folate or make sure there's enough in there. But if you're having kind of intestinal issues going on, there is a possibility that you're not absorbing your B vitamins that you're taking. So those capsules are really easy to absorb. They break down really fast. And I would definitely suggest that to try and get that down. I don't know what you're doing for supplementation, but that would be my first line of attack. Uh, and then doing, you know, the heart general frequencies. But anytime, <clears throat> like fourth chakra issues, anytime you have any kind of energy blockage, I always start there. This chakras are something I run almost daily to keep them clear. I think it's really, really important. So heart 
issues. Our, our heart uh, chakra blockage can lead to things like breast cancer, um, all kinds of, of heart disease. I mean, most kinds of heart disease. So really important to keep that clear. And I think that's a really easy place to pick up trauma. I mean, life isn't always easy. And we all go through things that are hurtful. I mean, even all of us with the best of intentions will end up hurting each other, even though we don't mean to at some point. And so really important, not only forgiveness, but to get that heart chakra cleared and open. Okay, high creatine levels. Can vibrogenics help lower that level? So high creatine le levels can indicate that your kidneys are struggling. That is a second chakra issue as well. Any urinary tract problems. There's a lot going on with the second chakra besides libido. I would absolutely make sure that we, everybody, you know, does the chakra balancing at least a couple of times a week to try and keep that energy moved. And if you have an issue in that area, take that solar cider, run two of them at a time. If, if you have two, uh, two chakras you're worried about with the corresponding symptoms and put those cell exciters right in their chakras. It really speeds up the process. So there are also kidney insufficiency frequencies and those kidney insufficiency frequencies are actually pretty cool. They're very effective. We have had, we had a lady, an elderly lady with her um, GFRs at 12 and she started using kidney insufficiency frequency and didn't go on dialysis. They went up to 26, 28, and she stayed there for a number of years until she finally passed from other causes. So it gives the kidneys that support that they need. And I would highly recommend doing that along with second chakra for sure. I don't know what, if I'd have to get a little more medical history, what the GFR levels are and that, that kind of thing, but really important to keep that supported. If you have any, any organ, that is needing extra support, I would address that as well as doing everything else, everything else in this system, like the supplementation and, you know, the Eastern medicine and the scalar wave technology, getting your cell voltage up. I just, I can't stress the importance of that. That is so important to anti-aging and wellness and healing, self-healing the body. Does anybody else have any questions? What? I do. Mary has a question. <laughs> yes, dear. Um, so I have a couple of questions. First question is, um, I have a friend that I'm helping that has, uh, has had two diagnoses of breast cancer and she chose the second time not to do any of the traditional therapies. I think the first time she had radiation and she's not sick. Like she's still working, you know, all of that. She's not having symptoms, but I, I did, I remembered you saying do the BX and the BY. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I just need to know how many times to do that before I move into a breast cancer one, two, and three pro, you know, program. Right. So what I ended up doing, I had a lady with uh, stage four and I ended up making a little card and we had BX, BY, breast cancer, one, two, three, and we'd rotate. We do two at a time each time she came in and she was coming in. Uh, she was coming in three times a week to start with, and then uh, ended up coming in a couple times a week after that. But the big part was getting her system alkaline, super, super important. Get those pH strips and alkalinize the body because it's, there's so many diseases that cannot exist in an alkaline environment. Exactly. Okay. Other question. Uh, somebody asked me what the difference between microcurrent is and the technology with fibrogenics. Can, can you tell me, I don't even know what microcurrent really is. Means. So electrical pulse, micro, microcurrent, that's completely different. I thought that was the same thing. Okay. No, it's, yeah, those are the same thing, but completely different technology than sound. Yeah. So getting back into that current realm is where Rife started. And the last 20 years, he went into sound, converting everything through Euler's method and octave algorithm into sound frequency formulas. And you can do that too. If you find that there is not a frequency in the, in the machine that you want that's not in there you can actually click on in your true resonance pro it'll say get clark frequencies and it's pretty amazing if rife didn't figure out a frequency formula it seems like hilda clark did <laughs> so you can get her frequencies it'll go right to her website you just copy and then you paste it into true resonance pro and I usually suggest you convert it. It gives you both options for conversion. I choose Euler's method because it brings them into a lower frequency range, which I think is more effective getting into the body. I try not to pick the frequencies that 
the frequency sets that go up near 20,000 hertz, even though the system is capable of that, I think it's more effective if you get it in more of an audible, transducible range. So convert it during uh, doing uh, Euler's method, push on that, and it'll ask you, it'll put up a little tab that'll scare you and say, do you want to erase or replace what's here? And people's immediate response is, I don't want to get rid of anything on Rife. But all it's going to do is, is open a new tab and it will insert all Hilda Clark's frequencies. And then you just save it as a preset, you name it. Then anytime you go back in, you just open user preset, click on wow. user preset. So okay, if you come, come up with something that stumped you, there's a possibility you could find it there. It really okay. expands what this machine could do. So microcurrent would be, uh, thank you for that explanation, because I saw the Hilda Clark's uh, option in there when I wasn't sure how to do that. The microcurrent would be the yep. same thing as what people used to, like what is used, PEMF, is it pulse electromagnetic? Yeah. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. That's microcurrent as well. And my other question, last one, was how can cell voltage be measured? Is there a way to measure your cell voltage? There is, but the easiest way to measure your cell voltage is take a look. So there are categories of what sort of cell voltage is, and you can just compare. It requires a dark field microscope. So if you can fi find somebody that does dark field microscopy and test it, I actually want to get a dark field microscope because before and after using the machine with scalar waves is something that I don't have any of those pictures. So I had one years ago and I want to get one again, because I think that would be a great piece of evidence in real time for people to see. Hmm. Yeah. I'd love to see it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Put it on the list. Yeah. Anybody else? Hi, uh, Caroline. I do have a question. Um, I had a patient who, you know, he came in for a refill of uh, valacyclovir, and I started to talk to him about the vibrogenics. And, you know, my issue with the herpes is that, you know, we test for antibodies. Right. And uh, once you have that antibody, it's always there. Right. Does the vice actually eradicate the virus? The antibody. So that's a very good question. So, if you if you talk to the uh, CDC and you tested everybody for herpes simplex, say, they ninety five percent of the population is going to test positive because they have it in their system. The one thing I know about this technology is it will make you asymptomatic. I don't have people do people don't come with herpes with before and after tests. They know they've got them from the symptom and. I don't know the answer to that question if the antibodies are going to be gone. I know that the symptoms are gone. Yeah, so no, as, I as figured, far I'm sorry to cut you off. I figured the antibodies wouldn't go anywhere, which is my they thing. Shouldn't. About, they yeah, shouldn't. Yeah, which is they why. Shouldn't. Well, I just I, don't have any medical data testing wise to answer that clearly. Yeah. I just know the symptomology. And that was actually, I think that was my husband's like aha moment because he was always like, I don't have anything wrong with me. Why do I need to use this machine? And the one thing he did have since childhood was um, herpes simplex. So he would get four or five cold sores, you know, they'd go up from lip to nose and just kind of hide out for a few days and then go back into the world and go back to work. And he hasn't had any this last year and he's been in the sun Clearly, there's been stressful situations over the last year, and there's never been a herpes outbreak. So as far as no manifestation of the actual disease, I'm, I don't know if the virus is still in there, but I'm sure there's antibodies. Okay. All right. Um, I guess I'll ask another question if no one else has anything. Okay. I uh, Well, I'll start with a... I spoke, to, <laughs> I spoke to a patient today who I had I had treated before with the depression and so on, mm -hmm. and we always added in the uh, uh, visual acuity in the True Residence program for her. And she was telling me she's like, I think my vision is getting better. And at the end of it all, she went to see her ophthalmologist, and I hadn't spoken to her in a few weeks. Uh, and I called her today to talk about something, and 
she said, I'm driving. And I said, what do you mean you're driving? She's like, I, was, I went to see my ophthalmologist. He said, my vision has improved. I went to the DMV and I passed the test and I can drive again. And she was like, and it's because of that. She's like, the first time I did it, I noticed it. Yeah. Now, I, I was very happy for her, but still I'm like, it's still a little difficult for me to wrap my head around you know, because I mean, obviously I wear my glasses to read things right. and I'm wondering, is it going to help me? And should I be using you, that? You can't, but you know, just a warning for you. When I did it, you know, I realized how many lines I had in my face and I quit doing it and I gracefully accepted my reading glasses. <laughs> so you do, it does really work. I mean, your eye tissue regenerates faster than anything. You know, it's the only part looking at a human body naked, the only live cells you actually see are the conjunctiva that cover the eye. And they regenerate rods and cones every 48 hours. There's a lot of constant regeneration in the eyes and then in the interpretive center. But visual acuity really, really works. So you okay. should try it. I, I'll tell you what, you try it and I'll try it again. Maybe I can get rid of my reading glasses. <laughs> All right. And although, okay. although Go ahead. my marketing director said it makes me look smarter. So I'm like, I was going up to give a talk and she's like, you should wear your glasses. I'm like, really? She said, yeah, it makes you look smarter. Well, Count me in on that challenge. <laughs> okay, let's all try it. And then, and then the next frequency chat in two weeks, we'll compare notes and I'll just look in the mirror less often. <laughs> one, one last thing is that I, I want to know how to, because I see a lot of things in the machine and I want to understand how to use them, what the parameters are, and so on. Um, right. And I'm just wondering where, I mean, is there like a detailed, documented manual of all the aspects of the device? Oh, and one other thing I forgot, I tested my, my, uh, my headphones in there, and it didn't, it didn't sit securely, the eight inch plug, you know, you plug in. Did it plug uh, all the way in? Sometimes there's an extra little push and it plops right into place. Okay. I'll, I'll try, try, it, try it one more I, time and then keep me posted. Okay. All right. All right. We'll do. Um, yes. But yeah, about the going back to the manual thing about learning all of these things, yeah. because my, my now 16 year old son is playing basketball wow. and I think about you know getting him on that peak performance oh, yeah. thing what it can do and oh, so yeah. on but I look at it and I have no idea what to do with it right right so this is I mean there's so much to learn I understand that in this technology and that's why we started building out the training platform and we are going to start filming a whole new series because I've had so many questions on everything from scalar wave technology to really understanding TBSW to the sweep generator and how does that work and what is it for? There's a lot. So we're going to be making a series of those. There's also a help section in every piece of software that we are completely revamping. It's super out of date because I've been doing the, the software technology for years and years and years. So it predated Vibrogenics. So it needs to be seriously updated. So what's going to happen is we're doing all the changes in the HTML now, and then it, we're going to do a PDF copy to send out to people if they so choose or put it on the training platform. So if they want to read it instead, the problem with our machine is we had to shift it to being a, it's going to be a five minute timeout now instead of a two on like the uh, Celtunes and True Resonance Pro. And the reason was, I had customers that would call me and they'd say the machine is glitching. It's just making these little sounds. Uh, uh, uh. And I would go and look and they'd have like 12 or 17 True Resonance Pros open. And there's over a million lines of code in every single one. So I made it time out after they were done so that they would close. And uh, the, problem that, the problem that came out of that is you can only read for two minutes out of the help section before it goes away. So once I get that all done, that'll go on the training platform as well. As far as the sports part, we are kind of amping up our game with um, Washington State University. They've been using our technology exclusively, our uh, sound vibration technology for rehabilitation and for peak performance for three or four years now. And there's another university that has been doing the same thing for about the same amount of time. So we're going to put together, we're 
putting together a series of protocols for everything from concussions to, you know, different common injuries. And um, there's one person in particular that actually, he's an amazing strength and conditioning coach, and he actually designed peak performance because he was taking our software and programming it in every time on that specific one minute and 20 second protocol, and then going in and finding those five right frequencies that he wanted to play. So we actually modified our software to put in peak performance. So I might have him do a module on that because this would be fantastic for your son. It really increases the performance. Okay, great, great. Thank you. Even getting on the machine right now would make a big difference. The recovery aspect, all of that. How old is he? He just turned 16. Yeah. Getting on the machine, he'll love it. He'll absolutely love it. Okay. Getting rid of soreness. It ups your game. Yes. He needs the help. <laughs> Dr. All Caroline, right. can I ask another question? Yes, you may. Um, I thinking we may have answered this before, but in case we didn't, I'm gonna ask it again. <laughs> um, is there a protocol you recommend for someone who has had the jab and is wanting to? get clear of some stuff? <laughs> yeah. So the chemical detox, I do the coronavirus SARS to do. That's it. right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now I remember. Yeah. Um, that's kind of a complex one. And we're kind of working on that to see what we can do. But I can tell you one thing, and this is actually probably the most exciting long haul COVID story I've ever heard. There is a couple um, south of here, about 50 miles they're an older couple and they're in their eighties. She got coronavirus in 2020 and it took her about six months, but she started feeling better. And then in 2021, she started feeling worse. And by January of 2022, she said she felt like she had a cloud of stuff in her lungs and both of them. And she had a horrible shortness of breath. And she went to doctor after doctor after doctor, trying to find something and nothing worked. And she finally called another couple that lives in her town that has a vibrogenics machine. And they text me and they said, what's the protocol? <clears throat> so put her on mood elevation because that's the depression fatigue. And when you are tired for three years, you're definitely depressed. <laughs> it's just a side effect that goes along with that. And then we ran coronavirus SARS. And then out of TBSW, the regeneration with the scalar waves on and she, I talked to her today and she's been uh, less than a week and she feels wonderful. Her husband said that the neighbors called and said, what's going on? Cause she walks down to the mailbox usually and has to stand there and try to get her breath before she walks back. And, he's, and she's walking down to the mailbox, getting the mail, pulling up weeds all along the way and coming back to the house. But she said she feels incredible. They just think it's a miracle machine. And I think it was a miracle for her, for sure. And people with really low cell voltage, they have a dramatic effect, really dramatic effect. And if you've had a long-term chronic illness, your cell voltage is low. So getting on this, this technology with the scalar waves and the sonic vibration, it just, it, it's like a, a lifesaver. And then her husband, he said it was snake oil, but he took his wife because she didn't feel good. And they talked him into getting on the machine and he had had four back surgeries and they were wanting to do the fifth. And it was, it started at his neck and it was going all the way down the lumbar spine. That was the last surgery that they wanted to do. And he said every morning he'd get up and the first three steps going to the bathroom were so painful. He could hardly take the next step. And he didn't feel anything. He said, when he got off the machine, his wife was in tears because she felt so much better. This is how different this technology affects people. <clears throat> goes home, goes to sleep, gets up, he's halfway to the bathroom and he's like, holy crap, I don't have any pain. The other thing he had was neuropathy. It was kind of a side effect of the surgeries. And so he goes to the bathroom and then he's like, I think I'll help my wife today. And he, for three hours, he cut off the ends of corn and they packaged them to freeze them. And he said, he hasn't been able to do that stand on his feet for 20 years because of the neuropathy. And, um, then he said when they were done with the corn, his wife did fine, you know, with their energy levels, he turned around and she was out cleaning the, cleaning the deck. So he was just I, completely blown away. And he turned around and bought one just like that. That's a good recovery story. I wish everybody was like that. Yeah. Kind of brought tears to my eyes, actually. 
I wish it worked that fast on everybody, but you know, like I said, everybody's different and some people heal more slowly, but I think if you attack it from every angle, from the energy body to the emotional body, to cleansing the body of the toxins that are in it, getting your lymphatic system moving, really getting that cell voltage up, and then using the frequencies that are specific for that condition. I think it makes just a huge difference. It's like you have the multimodality approach all in one machine. The only other thing I add to it is an oxygen concentrator because you're stimulating 100 trillion cells. It is the perfect time to bring in more oxygen. So I don't, I don't use oxygen tanks, just an oxygen concentrator. It binds the nitrogen because the air is 80% nitrogen. And then you can breathe in that 95, 98% oxygen. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that really accentuates the recovery effect from a lot of things, and especially from coronavirus. Um, question for you, as you mentioned oxygen, I, um, I'm thinking to put together a protocol where for, um, people with cellulite or, or lower abdominal fat to do, to put them in the, in the tri in the trifecta light bed mm -hmm. and the vibrogenics and then do, uh, an insufflation of rectal ozone. Oh, uh, interesting. And and uh, rectal ozone, then um, some subcutaneous ozone into the the you know abdomen or the thigh area, uh, and then I also have a um, a device. It's a it's a it's called an M Sculpt Neo. It uh, builds muscle and reduces fat at the same time. It uses um, electromagnetic uh, waves or frequencies to do that. Uh, and that whole thing, because my thought process was adding in the ozone to actually, you know, super oxygenate the, uh, the, the tissue and also that ozone having that, you know, upregulation of the mitochondria and so on. Have you had any experience interacting with ozone and the vibrogenics? So I have people that use ozone and fibrogenics, but not for weight loss. Okay. So the mitochondrial upgrading, that's great when you're doing a treatment protocol, but I've never, never heard of it. You'd be the first that's come up that for, for cellulite and weight loss. The red, the red light therapy, as you know, together with the fibrogenics, I mean, there's a chiropractor that's really successfully doing this in um, Las Vegas. And I think he's opening a second office because he's looked like many months in advance, okay. but he's doing um, 15 minutes in the red bed, 15 minutes on ultra with the weight loss frequencies and, right. you know, the mood elevation, stress relief. He's doing uh, lifestyle consulting, a counseling session once a week, and then um, a proprietary supplement. <laughs> it's a secret. But he's averaging 40 to 60 pounds in two months. So he's really booked out. That's why he was thinking about opening another location. So I've heard about, you know, using compression, using like the, the Theragun kind of massage to try and break up that cellulite after you've been on here. People have used the cell exciters right on that part where they're trying to, to uh, spot reduce. But the more fat you break down, you have to remember that your body is always trying to keep you safe, right? So if there are too many toxins, whether it's stuff you're putting in your body or you're in a toxic environment, there's mold or whatever it is you've been exposed to, if your liver cannot break down all of those toxins, it will store them in a fat cell. It may make a new fat cell just to store them in. It may increase your appetite. You eat a lot more, you make more fat cells and it safely stores those toxins away. So when you're breaking down those fast cells, they're going to be releasing toxins, really important to do liver support during that time. And a lot of flushing, a lot of uh, lymphatic movement, a lot of water, keep the GI tract in highly functional order. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but you'll have to let me know how that goes. I've just, I have never heard of ozone with, with weight loss. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to start it. My first session will be on thursday so i'll see how nice goes. yeah keep me posted that's certainly a huge issue like 72 percent of americans now they say are overweight and i wouldn't wouldn't be surprised if it's higher after covid i yeah. know a lot of people put on some extra lbs comfort food of 
Doritos. <laughs> Say one more time how fast the eye tissue regenerates. How many days? Uh, the rods and cones, it's every 48 hours. But the eye oh. tissue that covers your eye, the conjunctiva, is actually live cells. So they are constantly repairing themselves. If you scratch your eye, your body is hot at work and you can see that. Wow. Okay. All right. So we're all doing a visual acuity challenge. Yes. Okay. <laughs> there you go. All right. Might be time to get some work done there. <laughs> it's okay. You know, it was, it was my theory at that point. It's God's way of making it easy to grow old because you still think you look all right. You still think your partner's hot. But, <laughs> but it's good to see too, you know, especially when you can't find your glasses and you have to read something or you're in the grocery store and you're trying to read ingredients. Yeah. 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 Without glasses. <laughs> And the UPC codes to weigh them, that, that just drives me nuts. I don't have my glasses to weigh the bananas, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> memorize the codes. <laughs> and then you're asking customers, can you read this for me? Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Have you. a great week. Two weeks. Bye. Bye.